and it is actually located in a very very densely populated area. Um, it is a city called Mannheim, Mannheim is the place where it is located, it is a very very large city and uh, it is amazing I mean how they are able to maintain it is more than 100 years old and they have an interesting history that that is the only plant in the world that has not been a single explosion. That is amazing I mean they are able to they have made sure that their processes are so very well understood and their processes are so very well designed whatever transport processes you have been uh, learning in this course they have understood it so very well for their process and they are able to control it so very well that is quite amazing I mean it is very unusual to hear that there was not even a, a single small accident in the industry since its inception and more than 100 years ago. Uh, it is a 15 square kilometer plant so anyone who happens to be anywhere around that place so apparently they have a, a, a tour for open for public one time in a week I think uh, Sundays I think Sunday mornings they have a, an open tour for all the people from outside. So anyone who is actually going around that site anywhere near Frankfurt, Stuttgart any of these places it is it's, uh, it's just a, a half an hour train ride so you should go and visit this plant and it is really a, a very pleasant experience all right. Okay, so we have been discussing convection and so let us uh, a little bit of uh, let us catch up a little bit and then proceed further. So we start by observing some of these dimensionless quantities okay, so we have been discussing the analogy between different transport processes okay. so we said that we define Nusselt number does anyone remember yeah h l by k what is that yeah minus no not the positive quantity what is it it is the gradient at the boundary I should rather say interface it reflects the gradient at the interface okay and similarly we could write and that is the gradient concentration gradient at the interface what about CF yeah tau by So it is tau by rho u square by 2 and that will be 2 by Reynolds number multiplied by velocity gradient. At the interface, okay. But we also define this is the ratio of Nusselt number is the ratio of right. So it is the conduction resistance in fluid divided by. resistance to convection at 
rather across the interface because you are really looking at transport across the interface. And similarly, one could have a, a definition for Sherwood number, we will not get into that, it is anyway similar. Now, we also said that what is the functional form of Nusselt number? So, remember we said that the temperature T star, the dimensionless temperature is a function of X star which is the position inside the boundary layer, right. So, this is Reynolds number, Prandtl number and if you know the pressure gradient is typically a constant. So, Nusselt number will be a function of X star, Reynolds number, Prandtl number and dP star by dX star because it is evaluated at the boundary you take the first derivative. With so, this is nothing but dT star by dy star that is y star equal to 0. So, the Nusselt number is not a function of y position anymore, it is only a function of x position because you are interested in the in the gradient at the interface which is y star equal to 0. Okay, so what we are going to see today is, so so far we have not solved any equations. The question is can we get any further insights without solving the equations, we have to solve them eventually, but we are going to first let us try to extract as much information as possible before solving the governing equations. Okay. So, the first observation is that the Prandtl number, okay, Prandtl number is the ratio of mu over alpha which is the momentum diffusivity divided by thermal diffusivity. Okay. Now, note that all of these are happening in the boundary layer right. So, you are looking at characterizing the process in the boundary layer. So, the momentum diffusion and the thermal diffusion they have to somehow be related to, they have to be related to the delta temperature. What is delta? Delta is the boundary layer thickness. So, all the processes, the momentum diffusion is occurring in the boundary layer and it has to be a function of the boundary layer thickness and the thermal diffusivity has to be a function of the thermal boundary layer thickness because that is the domain in which these two processes are occurring. So, therefore, so this is the general functional form ok. We do not know what that n is till now, we are going to figure that out while we discuss different aspects of convection. So, it is safe to look assume that the ratio of the the momentum bound layer to the thermal bound layer thickness scales as Prandtl number to the power of n ok. We still do not know what that n is. In fact, some of you who have already done this uh, uh, laminar and turbulent flow experiment in the lab, you must have seen some something some exponent like this and so we are going to see what that exponent is. Similarly, one could express delta C as Schmick number to the power of n ok. So, this also gives you provides a mechanism to compare the boundary layer thickness, provides the provides a mechanism or provides a method to compare the boundary layer thicknesses and same same here right. So, immediately we could define, so we could I could take a ratio of these two. I can say Prandtl number to the power of n, Schmidt number to the power of n. So, that goes as delta C by delta T. Okay. Let me make sure I can get the numbers right. That is called Lewis number. Okay. So, so this is basically 1 by, so 
So, defined as Lewis number is defined as Schmidt divided by Prandtl number. So, if we define a new number called Lewis number, what would be the definition for Lewis number? So, remember Prandtl is momentum by thermal diffusivity, Schmidt number is momentum by mass diffusivity. So, Lewis number will be thermal by mass diffusivity ok. So, that is easy to see that. So, Lewis number is given by that is momentum diffusivity divided by mass diffusivity multiplied by thermal diffusivity divided by mass diffusivity. And so, that will be uh, alpha by d a b, where alpha is the thermal diffusivity of the fluid that you are looking uh, that you are considering and d a b is the equimolar mass diffusivity of the species that is diffusing in that, that particular stream. So, really what we have found is that Lewis number, Prandtl number, Schmidt number and Reynolds number ok. Uh, that is based on the length of the plate because you have looked at flat plate, you could always consider other geometries. So, these four numbers essentially characterize the diffusive properties of all three different transport mechanisms. So, you get a way by which you can compare all of these which means that if you know one of them, if you know Reynolds number, there has to be some relationship between the heat transport and the mass transport processes. Each of these numbers Prandtl, Schmidt and Reynolds number, they independently characterize each of the transport processes. So, this characterizes the thermal transport or the heat transport processes. this characterizes the mass transport process and this characterizes the momentum transport process. Now, you may also recall that the governing equations that we wrote for these three transport processes, if we introduce the boundary layer approximation, they all look similar right. They all have same terms, they have a convection term, they have a diffusion term plus the momentum boundary layer equation has a constant which is the pressure gradient. So, the functional form so the functional form of the solution for must be similar ok. So, it is very important to understand this, it is not same, it is similar ok. Because the momentum boundary layer equation does not depend upon the concentration and temperature, while the concentration and thermal boundary layer equations they depend upon the velocity. Although their functional form is same, so therefore the solution that you get, the functional form of the solution that you get, they have to be similar to each other which also means that this also implies that if one of the processes is, is characterized then other two must be similar ok. So, that also means that because the functional form is same, 
So, if one of the transport processes is characterized, if I know how to solve one of them and I found the functional form and I found these dimensionless numbers, then I am done. I should be able to find the solutions for the other two. Okay. So, it is this property which leads to the concept of the boundary layer analogy. So, we are going to capitalize on this observation that the functional form is similar and we are going to identify how to relate these three transport processes and therefore, by characterizing one of them we should be able to characterize the remaining. Okay. So, because the we said that the delta by delta t which is the ratio of the boundary layer thickness that scales as Prandtl number to the power of n. Okay. So, there have been lots of experiments particularly primarily due to work done by Reynolds where he has shown that the functional form dx star okay somehow it is found to be in fact we will see in the future lectures when we take specific cases we will see the kind of scaling that you will get. Parental numbers to the power of n okay. So, it scales as some function multiplied by parental number to the power of n and in fact that observation is because of the positing that the ratio of boundary layer thickness is scales as the parental number to the power of n okay. and in uh, this ap may appear very heuristic right now, but you will see that in the subsequent lectures that almost all the geometries and all the problems you consider this is the kind of scaling that you would usually get ok. So, for now we will assume that this is the scaling that you will get. assume this scaling in fact uh, for different cases later. By the way this has been experimentally shown very well. So, there are some nice cute experiments that has been performed where you can see this kind of scaling has been observed experimentally for different kinds of problems. So, similarly you could assume, so therefore, we said that the Nusselt number okay, which is h into L by k f. So, that is given by some functional form ok. If I call this as maybe I should use a different nomenclature, I call it g 1 ok. So, x star r e l and parental number. Okay. So, that turns out that it scales as d p star by d x star into parental number to the power of n. Okay. So, that is a because of the observation that the functional form the parental number to the power of n scales out as a as an as an uh, as a separate entity in the functional form we should be able to write Nusselt number in simply as some function g 1 which is going to be function of x star which is the x position and the Reynolds number and some pressure gradient multiplied by parental number to the power of n. So, supposing if I assume that d p star by d x star is constant which is a fair thing to say. So, Nusselt number can simply be written as x star r e l into Prandtl to the power of n. Similarly, we could say that Sherwood number will be same functional form x star 
multiplied by Schmidt number to the power of n. Okay, any question? Because the heat transport and mass transport in the boundary layer are related to each other. For the momentum bound layer, we said that the friction coefficient, okay, so that is given by 2 by Reynolds number into the same functional form into G1 into X star REL, okay. Now, if I am going to relate these three. How do I know what? This functional form would be just G1, okay. Now, the reason is that if you look at, if you remember the model equations, you will see that the scaling that you get in front of the diffusion term in momentum equation is 1 by REL, in heat transport equation is 1 by REL into 1 by Prandtl number, that is why. And in my mass transport equation is 1 by REL into 1 by Schmidt number, that is why the functional form will be saying. So now we can relate these functional forms. So we said G1 X star REL, okay. So that should be equal to, okay. So that will be Tf REL by 2, okay. And suppose the Prandtl number and Schmidt number are 1. When can Prandtl number and Schmidt number be 1? When can that be? When can you have delta T and delta same? So, when Prandtl number is equal to 1, so remember that it is nu by alpha, right? Momentum diffusivity by thermal diffusivity. So, this is 1 which means that the momentum diffusion, diffusivity is almost equal to thermal diffusivity. When is that the case? What kind of systems will have momentum diffusivity and thermal diffusivity equal? Or let us say momentum diffusivity, thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity. I said Schmidt number also is equal to 1. What kind of systems will have I am saying that Schmidt number equal to 1 which is nu by d. Does anyone know any example of when can it be the case that the thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity are almost equal? It is dilute gases. When you have very, very thin gas stream, so if you measure the properties of this thin gas stream, it turns out that these three momentum diffusivities are almost equal. They are not exactly the same, but they are almost equal. So, in those cases, the Schmidt number and Prandtl number are almost equal to 1, okay. 